Sunday night, Scott and I, we were in the bedroom. Oh, my God. No. Wow. And <laughs> we were just getting ready for the week ahead, as you do, you know, discussing okay. plans. And we shut the door because we wanted to have a little chat about the girls, basically. And because um, we want them to help out more around the house. Fair play. Yeah. And we shut the door. And as we shut the door, the door handle fell off. On the interior door. On the interior. <laughs> so good. And we were locked in the room. Oh, no. uh, straight away, I started feeling claustrophobic. <laughs> straight away. And we, I have a really large bedroom with a cathedral ceiling. Like, yeah. I live in a tree house, basically, oh, right, right, a right, mud right. brick tree house. Nice. And it's a huge room. And straight away, I'm like, oh, my God, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Can I ask you a question? How does your husband feel when the second that you, he, you can't get away from him, you start to, <laughs> you start to, you start to hyperventilate? Well, if anything it illustrates 18-year relationships, that's okay. it. And so um, so the kids, we, we're knocking the door going, guys, oh. we're locked in. Can you please take the other side of the door handle off so the door will just pop open? Oh, sure. Okay. Did, and, did um, they help? Nah. Chell was just laughing. Uh, oh, Odie's, Odie's <laughs> trying to shove a knife under the door. Wouldn't fit. And um, what for? Like one, two go in, one yeah, comes out. Pretty much <laughs> survival. Which it's it's turned into the Hunger Games, oh my God. and not in a good way. Oh my God! Um, and so then we had to. Jimmy opened the bathroom window. They had to bring some screwdrivers around. And then my husband said about trying to be a handyman. He, oh no! He's a very good cyclist, guys. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> so he's at the door with screwdrivers, trying to get that, trying to get. And I'm like, I said to him, "What are you doing? You can't do it, mate. What he can't? No. So I'm like, step aside. So, of course, he steps aside and I'm MacGyvering the door like, the whole time. And I'm going to say to the girls, girls, you need to get ready for school. You need to go now. And they're just saying, nah, no. my kids took full advantage. <laughs> and I think they started planning their life without us. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Like yeah, a Disney musical because all the parents pass away at the start of Disney <laughs> they musicals. Do. And um, in the end, yeah, in the end, we were trapped in there for 10 minutes. It was harrowing. Oh, I drank like my own three. wee, guys. <laughs> Oh, I drank my own did weed. you really? Yeah, it was hectic. <laughs> I got to that point. It. Yeah. So mo to. Mo most parents with young kids kind of dream of scenarios like that oh, where no. they can just be locked in their bedroom without any interruptions. So you didn't sort of my make kids, most of no, it? No, my kids are 16 and nearly 11. Yeah. That yeah. that can destroy lives. That's enough yeah. time, If they're left alone. But I opened the door in the end, guys. Don't worry. Oh, did you? Oh, mate. Hooray! I'm Hooray! a handyman in our Scotty! I jimmied it open with two tiny screwdrivers and then I just smacked it with a hammer. Oh, and does it still work? No, it nah, was broken gone. forever. <laughs> what about you, GD? You man of your, you know, life skills? I thought you were going to say height. Uh, well, stature. <laughs> Where, have you ever been stuck anywhere? <laughs> like in a tire? Do you or? get stuck under desks? <laughs> Just walking you, under desks? You get stuck. There's obviously that, that period at high school when, you you know, you're trying to maybe have your first pash and you've got, you've got say, braces on and they've got braces on. You know, I've, there's a couple of times I've been locked together with... Um, <laughs> You got stuck in someone's mouth. Got stuck in someone's mouth. Yeah. How did yours yeah. a life? How do you get that out? Sexy. You just had to sort of do a bit of just a bit, of, a bit of patience, a little bit of gentle wriggling, and you go first. Now I'll go first, and then you try and sort of unlock, uh, unlock, and then sort of back away. Like you've just had like a head-on car crash. You just got to sort of what yeah, base you is just got to sort of remove that, the metal. Wow, that is. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was the early days, but I have been stuck in. I was at once uh, a barbecue for um, the son of a media mogul in Australia. Who? Say names, name, names. No, no. It would have been no. Stokes. Murdoch. What? You said it. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Kerry um, Stokes' son. No, we'll, so I'm out on a, yeah, uh, out yeah. on a balcony. Uh, we're one floor up. Uh, we'd lock the door behind us. There's about 15 people out there in this barbecue having a few beers and a few snags. And after a while, we realized we were stuck. We couldn't go down. Um, there was no one to help us. So I managed to climb through a cat flap. Yeah. <laughs> <in the door>. <laughs> How? <laughs> what? Must have been slowly, a massive slowly, cat and flap. inch by inch, and with a lot of encouragement from yeah. everybody at the barbecue, I managed to go through, unlock the door, and I saved fifteen lives that day. What, everybody, what fifteen a, lives. You know what? You're so relatable because I too have been stuck on a multi-billionaire's veranda that was probably the size of most people's house. I don't know how you survived. Did you drink your own wheat? <laughs> no, just 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 high end champagne. <laughs> just the high end stuff. Today FM breakfast with M Grant and 